Saturday evening on BBC One. At 5.25, go live to the Channel Tunnel with a host of celebrities as they walk back to England for charity. At 5.45, is it a bird, is it a plane? No, oh, it's a microwave. On the house party this week, my special guest is Ronnie Corbett and Bob Carroll G's gets a gotcha for doing this. At 7.30, join Jim Davidson for another big break. At 8, it's time for those birds. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch your name. <laughs> Put it you like you. <laughs> Rumours are everywhere in casualty at 8.30. Hold oh, on a minute, who told you? I'd rather not say. Look, nothing has been confirmed yet. It's still all in the realm of speculation. Then it's back to the tunnel for a live update at 9.40. Saturday evening on BBC One. Blunt talking to keep you alive now on BBC Wells on One from Alexi Sale. Go on then. There you are, son. The keys to freedom, excitement, and an enhanced sexual profile. You know, in some cultures, the way a youth enters the adult world is that they have to eat the entrails of a lion without the beast noticing. In our culture, you have to be able to reverse round a corner without touching the curb. Being able to drive is a modern rite of passage. One day you're a boy or a girl with a crush on the intelligent one out of Take That. The next you're a man or a woman with a larder key on a Porsche key ring. Mr and Mrs K's catalogue use their cars to get from A to B. But you know that there's more to these mean machines than somewhere to put your roof rack. They're your first opportunity to show the world the real you. It's goodbye to Spamhead and hello, little red Corvette. What these young Turks don't know is that if it's your first year driving, you're up to four times more likely to be involved in an accident than experienced drivers. And it gets worse. If you're under 21, you're seven times more likely to have an accident than I am. Young people, particularly males, are the most likely to kill or be killed on our roads. And yet, when asked in the drive survey, nearly half the lads rated their driving skills as excellent. Woo! Bogus! Now, I know this is going to upset a lot of you who reckon you can handle a car like Tom Cruise in Days of Thunder, but if you're looking to reach your next birthday, it doesn't matter how you handle a car. So, if driving skills aren't the most important thing, what is? New drivers have been probed in the labs to find out why they're more likely to crash. Rookie drivers can be up to two seconds slower in clocking not only the writing on the wall, but the wall itself. Two seconds, even at relatively low speeds, is an awfully long time. One kangaroo, two kangaroos. The biggest difference between a safe driver and an unsafe driver is expecting the unexpected, even the very unexpected. Ah! Ready for your Paso Doble, Mr Merriweather? One of the reasons why new drivers don't notice hazards is that when we first start driving, we're much more concerned with what's happening under our noses than the car that's about to pull out three blocks away. 
but there's a whole world beyond the rear bumper of the car in front that you wouldn't believe. Ignore it at your peril, for the men with the grey suits and biros are watching you. Miss Judge the Ben, totaled the car, insurance premium went up by £1,500. End of story. I'm not driving, but unfortunately, after the accident, I had a tip with the insurance company. If you're reeling under a huge bill for third-party insurance, wait till you screw up. I felt I was a pretty good driver, that I could handle a car, that a severe crash wouldn't really happen to me. I felt as if nothing could happen, nothing could go wrong, but once the unexpected comes up, you have no chance. You still feel safe, but it was proved that I was wrong. I was going down the country lane on my way to work. I was doing about 40 miles an hour. I've been driving for about a year and a half. I felt comfortable in the cars, that I could drive them and pretty much handle it. I was approaching a bend and the car coming from the other way cut the corner. I just went straight into the car that was following him. I, in fact, didn't think it was that much of a major crash until I suddenly looked at his car. I suddenly thought, like, crikey, because the cars were just in a big, big state. I suppose if I'd been going 30, it might have, like, given me more time to avoid the crash, and maybe I'd have still had my car now. My insurance before for third-party fire and theft was £340. When I got an estimate afterwards, the cheapest one was for £1,000. I don't think I'll be able to drive again, really, for another couple of years. Now we, yes we, on the Drive programme, are able to make you, yes you, the offer possibly of your lifetime. Less aggro, less guilt, lower insurance premiums, lower accident rates. Simple steps to safer motoring that are as simple as well, as simple as driving better. To start off with, ease off the gas and give yourself more time. People like cheap electronic organisers can only process a certain amount of information at a certain rate. Driving already pushes our processing skills to the limit. If you drive fast, you're pushing yourself beyond that limit. Nobody in their right mind actually wants to slam into somebody's sister when they're driving their little runabout down a cosy back street at 45 miles an hour. It just, you know, sort of happens every time. Honest, it's an accident. That doesn't do much to help the nearest and dearest. Shunts! What happened? Didn't you see me stop? I mean, I was stopped for long enough. Pardon the language, but shunts are a common cause of grief. They happen because when we drive, we gamble. You see, it's only a matter of the odds that the driver in front isn't going to slip into a handbrake turn, spin like a dervish, and emerge as a beautiful butterfly. When you're driving too close, you're gambling with your life, and the bookmaker from hell collects his debts in a flash. It's that bloody quick. And what's the point? You're gonna get anywhere quicker by risking your neck, your car, and your no-claims bonus. Give yourself more time and enjoy your journey. Ease off. A two-second gap between you and the car in front is safe. One kangaroo, two kangaroos. Never kid yourself that driving skills are going to get you out of trouble. Drive like this in real life and big scores are going to add up to notes on your car insurance and points on your licence. Oh, and you kill people, of course. So don't be a dickhead. Ease off the gas.
Duplication on BBC Wells on 2 in a moment with a double dose of Rimmer aboard Red Dwarf. Then at 9.30 on 2, Alexis Sale returns to launch the BBC Design Awards. Frank, it doesn't seem to figure in your calculations, but I have a job, and the job's in London. Well, Frank goes to Israel, Frank takes the kid. Where are you? In hot pursuit. Where's your loyalty? Out the window. Tessa, please, look, don't panic. I asked you to have her. You promised. Max knows what he's doing. Stop. Love Hurts in half an hour on BBC One. Now on BBC Wales on One, the nine o'clock news with Peter Sissons.